friends, neighbors, and of course, the YouTube comment section. What is up? It is late on a Friday night. And uh, am I going out and getting crazy? No, we're finishing up installs. Um, so this case is, is kind of pretty much done. And I thought that uh, I've been sort of teasing you with um, the, uh, the panel building video and then also the um, uh, pleading of uh, understanding the finer points of hi-fi language, a.k.a. eARC. But I figured I would show you guys the finished case. Um, so I'm going to need you to use your creative imaginations here. Um, this is um, with the front panel removed. So we do have this really nice looking fascia paste that, uh, that goes over everything. So we'll, we'll press bend all the speaker grills and all that kind of stuff in there. So obviously I can't integrate the case with that thing being there. So it is removed and not very pretty looking. There's some stuff that the guys in the shop have to finish up too. Like they don't have the, uh, the pull handles on these drawers. Um, they revised the subwoofers midstream on me. <laughs> so I expect whatever the original Personas Eris was, and now this is the Eris Studio or something like that. So there's like this big gap around everything. So the production boys need to make that correct. Um, the other thing they did was Sony uh, revved the PS5 on me. <laughs> Um, they used to have this little foot bracket thing that came up in the bottom, and then we had this CNC piece that went in the drawer that uh, would just hold this thing together and hold it upright, but they just had these little cheesy plastic feet that will break if you blow on them a little too hard. So, um, you know, just some, some stuff. So if you guys do follow LM, which I, you know, hope you do, Check out the Instagram, LM underscore cases, or if you check out our YouTube page, it's just LM cases, but our handle is LM cases 1985. I'm sure there will be a similar video uh, about this sort of thing, but um, I figured I would also do a video and it's like weird sort of completed state on the Billy channel um, and just get a little bit more nerdy with stuff and talk to you guys about it. So uh, let's start at the TV side. So this is a pen lift. And, you know, I, um, I'm dying to start a, a case sort of series called Ask a Case Guy um, because I just have this thing that, the thing that I say all the time around here at LM is that all road cases look exactly the same on the internet. So if you're buying something from us that is generally three times the cost, uh, I never want to say just cause, like I always want to have, you know, a really good reason for why we do things the way we do them. You know, I mean, uh, contrary to popular belief, there is not a ton of markup in the road case game, you know, <laughs> so um, our cases are expensive because they're expensive to make and we use good materials. So uh, to that end, let's talk about this lift. This is a lift from Penn. Uh, chances are, if you've seen a monitor uh, lift case on the market, they are probably using this one. Uh, this is the Vincent VL1000 lift, available from Penn Elcom. And for many of you who have seen any of my other video lift projects, we use an overkill lift that's manufactured in Arizona by a company called Nexus 21. And uh, they are very cool, and they build really, really, really nice made in America, super robust lifts. This thing, meh, not great. But we have to use it because it's the only lift that, um, it's the only lift that we can get that fits the form factor of this case. So, you know, generally uh, cases, we, we try to stick within truck pack at least in one dimension on every case that we build. If we can get two dimensions, life is good. But if one dimension is a possibility, um, that's what we try to do. So this particular case is 30 inches deep, um, OD, 28 inches deep, ID, and because of the subs. The subs are the deepest thing that's in the case. Um, so, you know, that sets the depth. That's the deepest thing. So in order to get a monitor in here, we have to use the pen lift. Now, this is a 55-inch monitor. I think this pen lift is, is designed for a... I think it's... I know it's overkill for the application, or at least spec-wise. Do I like it? Nope hate it. Is it the only thing that will fit in this? Yes. Is this the only application where we use this lift? 
Also, yes. So powering in this sort of thing is we've got a little J box that's right here. Um, you know, and this is just like, I mean, again, I always make the joke that the difference between an integrator and an enthusiast is the amount of heat shrink. I will have a subsect thereof number, Roman numeral two, TechFlex. TechFlex is the other thing that separates the uh, men from the boys. So did I wrap the factory power cable to the monitor in TechFlex? Yes, I did. Does that do anything for the functionality? No, but I guess if you buy that cable from Best Buy, it's 70 bucks now. So, I mean, this is the kind of stuff that I just totally love is, you know, cutting cables, shortening them, making them super neat so that everything is, um, everything is just all nice and loomed together. This is, um, well, I can't say what the lighting term is for this thickness of a cable, but I'm sure you all know, uh, coming down from the monitor. And then again, just like some of the stuff that I obsess about is all of this. So it's just like, ooh, look at that. All the... All the, the factory IECs have been done, replaced with lockers. These are all custom made. So, I mean, again, it's like you look at this thing and you're like, well, why did it take you a week to wire this thing? And also, why does it cost what it costs? Because every single thing in here is custom made. Um, so, speaking of, here's the mess of wiring back here. And by mess, I mean the absolute beauty of it all. So I'll show you the back end of these drawers because I think this is cool. I mean, again, when I make these videos for LM, I, I don't really go into this detail, and it certainly is not as conversational. Um, but, you know, everything is loomed. So there's an Apple TV up there, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, the Apple TV has a uh, Ethernet, power, and HDMI loom. There's the PlayStation. This stuff is all nice and loomed back there. We have a pen. Uh, tour grade rack drawer, which is really cool. Penn really stepped up their rack drawers um, recently with the tour grade stuff. If you're looking for a rack drawer, check those out. Um, they do have rear kits that come with them, which are awesome. And then, you know, the, the thing that I always kind of snicker about is why does it, every integrated system have a rack drawer? Well, that's where all the manuals and crap goes. So we have to, um, we have to provide that. So uh, wiring wise, you know, we go through here and I know that this looks like a mess back here, um, but it is, it is a, an absolute symphony to get this stuff all in here. So what you're looking at in the rack section is a DBX Zone Pro, a uh, Netgear PoE switch, a Furman power sequencer, um, and a custom I.O. panel that's on the front. Um, there's a radial DI that's back here also. Um, that provides a split audio output. So if you do want to take a, a, a feed off of this for e-gaming or any of that kind of thing, you can feed a bigger system. But, you know, I always try to put myself in the, uh, in the integrator's position when we do this stuff. So check this out. It's like, all right, this is a courtesy power outlet. So if you're back here and you got to do some config stuff and you got to plug your computer in, here's a tail. Just break the, uh, the zip tie. You know, we do label all of the HDMIs and everything. So this is HDMI 3, a.k.a. eARC. So if you do want to get into a soundbar kind of thing to feed it, you can. Again, it's all labeled. These locking IECs are sweet. I, I use them on everything. I just have a giant box of, of IECs that I throw away. Um, so, all right, this is for the case nerds. We've been building this case for, I don't know, since 2008 or so. Currently, this is the year of our Lord, 2024. I change this case design every single time we build it just a little bit because it is such a PIA to wire this thing. So the thing that we came up with over the past couple of years, this is our 2019, I think 2019 rev, is we made it so the back end is hinged. So that if you need to get to something, you know, you can just very quickly open up the back of the case and see everything. Um, now, I know what some of you are going to say, but Billy, the monitor, oh my God, all those cables are against the back of the monitor. Don't worry. There's a pop-in piece of plastic that's vented and very nice looking. But again, this is the, uh, I just finished assembling this and I'm looking for YouTube content um, segment of the, uh, of the install. The LM video will be, well, maybe not better shot, but certainly less, uh, <laughs> less snark on the, uh, <laughs> less snark on the, the narration. Um, so for these guys, um, historically, this case comes with a PS5 and an Xbox. This particular customer just wanted it with a PS5. So we do make these little, these little brackets or these little holders for the, um, the, uh, the controllers, which I think are pretty cool. Uh, here's the Apple TV. Apple TV gets a bracket 
Um, it gets a bracket to prevent it from going left to right, and it also gets this little bracket on the top from going up and down, and then it has a loom. Now, you might be looking at the back and saying, oh, there's so much cable tension on the back there. Well, we need that in order to keep them plugged in because the only locking connection is an Ethernet connector on the back there. Here's our PlayStation. And again, it's just like when you start to look at the looms, there's three connections on each one of these things. There's a power, there's an HDMI, and there's an Ethernet. So, you know, the looms don't get caught. They're, they work really well. Everything's good. It's like stuff that I just obsess about, you know. But here's the Feast de la Resistance. Or, you know, I'm trying to speak Italian. My French is crap. So, um, anyway, come on. Come on. How sweet is that? Power status indicator button. Watch this. You guys want some, some Friday night action? Check this out. So it's on. Let's shut it off. As soon as you shut it off, ooh, the light goes out. Ooh, and there's your power sequencer activation. And it just does its thing. And then if you want to turn it on, you just hit this very satisfying button. And it starts your delays. Your banks come on. And alas, you get the on, ever so satisfying green button. So, I mean, for this kind of stuff, you know, I, I try to make it so that you never have to touch the TV. I mean, again, this is insanely overkill for a consumer bit of electronics, but, um, you know, the panel has a, a lift switch. That's a momentary switch for the lift. Um, the lift also comes with a remote that actually works pretty well. Um, this version of the panel has a uh, Decora outlet in here with two USB-Cs for charging. Um, we've got five USB-As, which are kind of becoming obsolete now, so I've got to rev this panel and have more USB-Cs in here. Uh, this is the ISO output from the DI, so if you do want to feed a larger system. And then here is the auxiliary input uh, for the uh, HDMI. There's an aux audio if you want to do analog audio, which apparently no one in the world will ever have access to anymore. Thank you to our tech phone overlords. Um, and then also a uh, TV USB, so if you want to, you know, you can also charge your phone on that. Uh, so there's technically what? It's five, six, seven, eight USB ports on this thing. Um, what else? Oh, power sequencer. Power sequencer is a lifesaver, man. I feel like these are absolutely underutilized. This is like, you know, I put a lot of PA systems in churches. This thing is like a lifesaver. You never have to worry about popping your speakers. As long as you just don't rip the power cord out of the thing, it'll always sort of sh shut down nicely. Um, the uh, power panel for this is a standard thing for us. I've got two versions of this panel on LM's web store. Um, check the upper right-hand corner of your screen for this version. Uh, but I think this is a good just generic problem solver kind of thing. Um, it's got a, a duplex on the front. It's got the, uh, the ever popular combination true one inlet outlet jack. Because you know me, I love me some Hubble fourplexes. And you know what else I love? The world's most expensive charging cable that you can get uh, configured with a um, with whatever you want, but also as a true one uh, capable uh, inlet situation. So of course, I had to build the cable. Oh, and I just want to let you guys know, I do use ferrules now on all of my uh, PowerCon True One IEC and wherever humanly possible. There's going to be a video coming up. I kind of want to do a redemption video for everybody that watches me build uh, power cons and true ones. It's just to say, I use ferrules now. It's okay. I learned my lesson. Everything's good. I even bought this stupid $150 Knipex crimper. Um, again, stuff on this panel. Oh, so I'm sorry. I'm distracted with uh, caffeine and snarkiness. Um, so this panel, you get the true one inlet outlet, a duplex, and then you get four D punches on the front of this. Um, so I have it just populated with, um, with cat sixes. Uh, this is just an ethercon jack. Actually, this is my, uh, sound tools cable that I hacked, um, a <laughs> hundred feet of it. And I just made shop cables out of them. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm giving you WAN access to the router and there's also LAN, um, there's LAN, uh, output here. So if you want to connect a, um, you know, an access point or something like that. Um, okay, DBX. I'm using DBX Zone Pro 641. And guess what? You got to program this guy with, wait for it, RS-232. And wait, 
a laptop running Windows XP. What? That can't sound good. It actually sounds hilariously good. I wish I could play this for you so you could hear it. Um, you know, um, oh, wait, wait, hold on. I'm going to beat you to it. Comb filtering. I said comb filtering first. You good comment section? You all right? Uh, this actually does sound really nice. I have all of the speakers on individual outputs, so I do have a time delay. Um, I do have a time delay on this, so it, it actually is very good sounding. It is not mono. It sounds like sound is coming outside of the case because just a few millisecond delay it just does a great uh, a great job of making this thing not sound like a giant piece of poo. Um, I'm not going to tell you what my delay time is because I'm sure you'll hate it, systems bros. Um, what else? Oh, check it out. I am providing a 25-foot um, industrial-grade cat cable to go with it. I'm using the infamous Belden audio grade cat cable because I had to buy 1500 feet of it for a client to build a cable set for them. And I have like, I don't know, 1200 feet of it left. So <laughs> if you guys want to buy this cable, uh, you can either buy the pre-made cable from, from our web store or you can buy this stuff by the foot. So if you guys are uh, making cabling for anything and you need audio grade cat cable, God, please buy it from LM. I have so much of it, it is never going to go away. So I have it priced at our cost on our website because I'm trying to get rid of it. So anyway, thought this was a unique install. Figured you guys would like it. I need to give the YouTube's comments uh, section something to do while they are in the restroom, just rage commenting on all of my stuff. Um, again, it, follow the LM video or follow LM on YouTube. There'll be a, a more professional, less grumpy Friday night at 9 o'clock. Uh, just finished this project up um, video on this. And uh, yeah, hit me up. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Uh, these are unique. Uh, again, I always joke about my Ask a Case Guy series that I'm going to start. And one of these days, I'm going to do it. But, you know, again, all road cases look the same on the internet. And, uh, you know, if you, if you have questions about road cases, I'm always down to uh to start that dialogue i've been at lm my entire life lm cases is one year older than me the company was started in 85 and i was born in 86 so you know road cases are kind of my thing so if you have any questions about this or installs or cables or any of that kind of stuff leave a comment below you can also email me billy at at uh i'm gonna say billy at lm cases which you can also email me at but it's billy at billylaguardia.com i will catch you guys later hope you have a great day See ya.